Wow, thank you, Hoda. As Hoda just said, all it takes is one person to listen, to believe in your story, to help you get the support you need. So I encourage everyone in this room, I know there are many of you, to be that person and to be that hope. I want to now welcome Hannah to the stage. I've had the pleasure of interviewing Hannah before. She is a senior at Glencoe High School and also one of our Asha storytellers. Welcome, Hannah. Good evening. I have to lower this microphone a little bit. Um, so as Genevieve said, first of all, thank you for introducing me. My name is Hannah, um, and some of you may recognize me from speaking in front of you two years ago. Um, when I first got involved with ASHA, I was a sophomore in high school. I was so nervous to get up here and speak that I could barely even see. Now I'm a little bit less nervous, so that's good. Um, but I never imagined that just me, one person sharing my story, would turn into the work that has consumed my life for the past two years. And for that opportunity and for the opportunity to be in front of you again, I am incredibly grateful. Um, with that, I'm going to get a little bit into my story um, and my lived experience. So my life growing up was characterized by success until it wasn't. I grew up as the textbook gifted kid that I'm sure any educators in the audience are familiar with. School was never hard for me. I never had to try. I was put in the talented and gifted program before anybody else in my grade. But the dark side of that is I never learned how to fail. I never had to try. I never did poorly. And because of that, I lacked that most vital skill set, which is knowing when you're wrong, knowing when you're beat, and asking for help. My whole growing up, I thought that it was me. I was the only one that could help myself. And so when that success and when that facade finally crumbled, it happened catastrophically. My freshman year of high school, I was going through a lot. I'm pretty sure every high school freshman is. I was struggling in school for the first time. I had a family member who was in the hospital and then passed away. I was in the midst of a really toxic friendship that was happening to end. Um, and the culmination of all three of these factors happened within one week of one another. My grandma passed away, the friendship relationship finally ended, and it was the end of the school period. And it's safe to say that already this was one of the hardest times in my life. But to couple that with the fact that it was a historic snowstorm and we weren't able to leave our house for eight days led to one of the darkest places I've ever been. I was struggling. I couldn't barely get out of bed in the morning. I didn't want to eat. I couldn't sleep. I was thinking about hurting myself. I never did, but I was thinking about it, and I was pretty damn close. And what I credit for saving my life and for getting me back on a track to recovery was a conversation that I had with one of my friends. And what she told me is that I don't always have to be strong for myself, that it's not weak to ask for help, and that if I need it, that's not going to make me any lesser of a person. And with that conversation, I was able to work up the courage to tell my parents that I was struggling. And from then on, again, I am a success story. The system worked for me. I talked to my parents. They were supportive. I was put in touch with my counselor at my school. She was supportive. And eventually, after jumping through the numerous hoops of the Hillsborough School District, I was finally put in touch with a care counselor. And even there, I had a great experience. And frankly, this is not the case for hardly anyone. The system doesn't work. I am the exception. I am not the rule. And it's worth touching on why that system worked for me. I have supportive parents. I have access to those resources that we need, be that financial, medical, or even just the ability to navigate the system and have advocates. And frankly, I come from an involved and wealthy white family, and that is the main reason my pain was taken seriously. I have all of these privileges. I have the support. And even with that, I had a hard time going through the system. When I first came forward that I was struggling was January. Because of the administrative and bureaucratic hoops, I was not in counseling until March. Frankly, that is unacceptable. If you're struggling with your mental health, you don't need help two months from now. You need help then. And so if the system was cumbersome and untenable for me, coming from this most incredible place of privilege as the quote unquote perfect victim, it's not going to work for most people either. And as I started to recover and as I started to believe that I could be okay someday, 
I started to ask myself, how can I leverage my privilege and my experiences to make sure that my peers don't have to suffer in silence anymore? The official figure for mental illness is one in four that us, of us will struggle with it someday. But frankly, I think it's more likely that it's one in four of us that won't. In my generation, almost everyone struggles with their mental health and almost no one gets help. And so as I got put in touch with um, Asha, as I'm sure many of you know Gaia3, it was through a miracle of networking that we got in touch. Um, we host a TEDx youth mental health conference in Hillsborough. One of my friends gave a speech that I was originally going to give. He met Kathy, Kathy told Gaia3, Guy three got in touch with him, and then he got in touch with me. It was a typical story. Um, but I was able to be put in touch with this organization of other people who, though we come from different backgrounds, different mindsets, different cultures, and different age groups, I learned I was not suffering alone. And I was given the incredible opportunity to have a platform to share my story in an attempt to break the wall of shame and silence in my community. Broadly, in our work with ASHA, we've touched the lives of thousands of students across the region. Um, but on a more personal note, I have helped several others to share their story and start their conversations within my own peer group. Um, one of ASHA's storytellers, Jackson Buell, is one of my best friends. Um, he's here tonight. He's over there. So everybody give Jackson a hand. And having the opportunity to connect with both on a systemic and on an incredibly personal level with other people whose stories mirrored my own in a myriad of ways but were each their own at the same time has been incredibly inspiring personally and has been incredibly inspiring to our community. As soon as one person speaks up, it opens the floodgates for others. As soon as I had the opportunity to share my story, at my school, the conversation started. In my community, the conversation started. And we can see tangibly the impact that one story can have. And every single person in this audience has a story. And it's beyond important that we have these conversations. And personally, with the opportunity that I've had, it has inspired me to both heal and to help spread healing, to be able to speak up and stand in front of you today, or stand in front of my school, or even simply just stand in front of my group of friends. We have to keep investing in the mental health of the next generation. We have to keep having these conversations because this issue isn't getting better. The issues that are leading to these mental health conditions, whether it's the struggle with climate change or the political world or the impacts of social media, they're not going away. The thing that has to change has to be us. The problem is only getting bigger, and so our compassion and our grace and our support for one another only has to get bigger as well. Much like many other of these pressing issues, the time to act is now. We can see that our time is now, and we can see the power in a single story or a group of stories or simply a community coming together to acknowledge what's going on. And with your support here tonight, we're ready to keep leading the charge to face this most pressing of epidemics head on. Thank you.